Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely amazing. By the way, uh, look what I found out. Bowser, you silly monkey you. Bowser, of course, we try to bring out at least once every few weeks just to kind of do a little bit of a health check on him to make sure he's okay. And I tell you what, he is one strong monkey. I just want to check his feet, make sure his feet are all good. You know, inside that mouth I can look good. Look at his carapace, even check his underside just to make sure everything is still healthy. He is unbelievable, prehistoric crazy beautiful animal it is going to be an absolutely amazing day why don't we push our problems aside have a great day together by the way we had those amazing super lorry leopards hatch out i cannot wait to show you those guys and from the moment that we cut this clutch i have been waiting for this exact time and that's when these guys all hatched out the super lorry leopards and this entire clutch is ridiculous i'm not gonna lie look at the lorry leopards alone i mean the lorry leopards are ridiculous and there's a bunch of them here this is a lorry leopard, this is a lorry leopard here, and look at how crazy, each one is a little bit different. I mean, we really, I mean, the odds on this clutch were ridiculous. Another lorry leopard ball python, uh, there's another lorry leopard ball python here, then a couple normal lorry ball pythons, which are pretty cool in itself, but let's, let's just get right to it. I mean, come on. As much as the lorry leopards are amazing, this is the animals that I wanted to look at. The super lorry leopards, oh my goodness. There's one right here. Here's a second one that is a ripper as well. Oh my gosh. And then of course there's this one that might be the best one of all. I mean, look at the pattern on that thing. Unbelievable. I mean, take a look at these three super lorry leopards right here. That is ridiculous. I mean, silver, blue, unbelievable. Now, as these guys get older, the blue does kind of get more brownish and tannish and stuff like that, so they're not as incredible. But as babies, who doggy? And then I start thinking, like, how can we keep them blue, like, down the road? What mutations do we have to breed into them? What would happen if you put an Enchi into them? What would happen if you put Desert Ghost into them? I mean, there's so many hypo, uh, banana, you know, there's so many things you could do that are gonna make these things incredible. But the fact that we had three Super Lorry Leopards unbelievable and the fact that they hatched out i am overjoyed what do you say we sex them right now we'll get the first one the crazy stripey one first and right off the rip we've got a little girl okay so we got a little female here let's see what this boy or girl is right here another little female so two females i hope we get one male come on give me one male and there's the boy <laughs> All right, so we ended up having two females right here and a boy, that's a trio, that's crazy. I'm definitely gonna keep at least a pair of these. Maybe I will offer one up for sale, one female Super Lorry Leopard. I'm not 100% sure yet if I'm gonna do that, but we'll get them set up, get them shed out, get them feeding before we make the final decision. But oh my gosh, these babies are to die for. Uh, one of the coolest clutches that I've hatched out so far this year and maybe ever in my entire career. This next corn snake clutch that just hatched out was actually a black motley corn but it was actually, interestingly enough, bred to a het black motley scaleless. So I would have expected to get some black motley corns out of this, and we didn't. What we ended up getting was a bunch of normal black corn snakes, uh, very cool ones. There's some with them, really interesting. As a matter of fact, that almost looks like a ghost corn snake. It's really interesting. And then we got some snow corn snakes. And that's one of the things that's interesting with corn snakes. A lot of times there's a lot of hidden genetics. When you're like, oh, this is just het for one thing, you end up producing three or four different things. So that's just kind of how it goes. That's because so many people have bred so many mutations into the corns. It's actually almost impossible to get a corn snake that isn't carrying multiple genes, to be honest with you. Nevertheless, black corns, snow corns, these are all also possible het for scaleless now and are absolutely 100% het for motley. In the dungeon, which can only mean one thing. Egg time, egg time, egg time. Egg time and I'm not gonna lie to you. Remember the other day when we pulled this clutch of eggs and I said this could be a life-changing clutch because it's been a project I've been working on for like seven years and I said I had two potential clutches. Well, this is number two right here. Again, this could be the hat for this particular recessive mutation if it is a recessive mutation. So now we have two clutches to pull from here. I'm gonna pull mama off here. Go ahead, get off mama, you're okay. And again, another beautiful clutch. I could not be happier. The one thing I was really worried about with this project is what happens if they slugged out, right? It would mean I'd have to wait an entirely another year. The fact that we had seven eggs from the first clutch, and I'm not sure how many from the second clutch, but it looks like about the same number. I'm just gonna go ahead and get these in the egg box and we can count them up. But now we have two clutches and then our odds are much better. Because the truth is, is that recessive to recessive on average is one in four baby.
babies would be the actual, what they would call the homozygous or visual, right? So now we actually have two, four, six, seven more eggs. That means we have 14 eggs total. Out of 14 eggs, in theory, we should have three of those visual animals. This at least extends our opportunity to produce it, right? So, and it's only a few days, maybe four or five days apart. So when we hit the first clutch, if it turns out to be recessive, we are golden and we can look forward to cutting this clutch. If we miss on the first clutch, we at least have the second clutch coming in just a handful of days to hopefully prove it out. Like I said, game changer, gonna be amazing. I hope this works out just so I can share it with you guys, but that's it. The lonely clutch today down in the dungeon, but it was a banger. clutch of eggs that actually, ironically enough, one egg is already pipped out, which tells me that they are obviously ready to get cut, right? Uh, again, usually 57, 58 days, they will actually pip out on their own. I try to get there just before we pip. Sometimes I miss out, and one already pipped out. You'd have a combination of all kinds of banana stuff, banana extreme gene, and banana spiders, extreme gene banana, all that type of stuff. Let's just go ahead and jump right into egg number one. The first egg's always like that exciting egg, you know? I don't know why, I guess all of them are exciting, but it uh, looks like we have, ooh, what the heck? Right off the bat, we get a, an animal that doesn't make any sense. It looks like it's a pastel. We shouldn't have a pastel, well maybe it's just, wait a second, maybe it isn't a pastel. Maybe it's just a really pretty normal. Wow, that's a bizarre looking, I think it is a normal. But it's really cool, so who knows? I don't know, maybe there's something else genetically going on. Maybe this is the extreme gene, not, I don't know. Let's just jump on to egg number two. And like I always try to say, you know, I am uh, always learning and figuring things out myself, so I get shocked all the time as well. This is another just normal ball python in the second egg that looks like, and I think it is that extreme gene has got some influence on it. The extreme gene is kind of just a little bit of a reduction of pattern, kind of makes things enhanced and stuff like that. So I have a feeling the first two we hatched out here are gonna be extreme gene no banana stuff yet so let's move on to egg number three all right three come on let's get something interesting here guys let's go all right all right oh yeah baby Woo yeah we hit it right there that is the banana oh my gosh this thing is amazing this is the banana extreme gene spider and it is a zinger i mean that is one of the prettiest extreme gene bananas i've ever seen wow there is such a reduction of pattern that is going to be absolutely a ripper the dad's really pretty but that one is amazing so uh we finally hit the all gene animal let's move on so hopefully we get some more of that type of stuff in here because that was pretty incredible Let's see. Okay, so we just have a banana here. Um, could be a banana extreme gene. We'll wait till it actually hatches out, but definitely a banana. So that's cool. We're starting to hit some banana stuff, which is what we really want on this clutch to begin with, right? Let's move on to egg number five. And here we go, egg number five. What do we have? What do we have? All right, and it looks like another banana, but what kind of banana? This looks like, again, another banana extreme gene spider. This one isn't quite as reduced as the other one, but still really beautiful. So again, another banana extreme gene spider. So uh, doing pretty good, three more eggs to go. And what will we have? Oh, the odds are getting better and better as we go here. Another banana extreme gene spider. That's three of them. Woo! Anyway, that's pretty good. And now this next egg was the animal that was pipped out. I could tell because of its nose that it was a banana. Don't know if it's a spider, don't know if it's an extreme gene, but we know it's a banana. So we hit uh, four bananas in a row, about to be five bananas in a row. And we're just gonna be really gentle with this one because it's already starting to pip out. We don't wanna obviously cut the animal or do anything, so we're always very, very careful. Oh, and this is cool. This is definitely a banana extreme gene. You can really tell the extreme gene with the banana. So it's not a spider, but it is a banana extreme gene. One egg to go. I tell you what, starting with two kind of normally looking animals and just running the table with bananas has been pretty awesome. One more egg. Let's see if we can continue on the street. And what do we have here? Yeah, it looks like a banana. Don't know what kind of banana yet, but definitely a banana. So that is awesome. I mean, gosh, it is so cool. And again, it looks like uh, another banana extreme gene, definitely. So it looks like we hit at least two banana extreme genes, maybe one banana possible extreme gene. 
three banana extreme jean spiders and then a couple maybe just extreme jeans this this was an awesome odd ah, club but what what the breeding is you couldn't have expected any better results than that that was absolutely epic guess what time it is guys time. I don't know if you guys are going to be sad when we're done with this or you're going to be so happy to never hear that jingle again. I'm not sure. I know I still love it. So I hope that you guys do. And we literally only have a handful of Kluber clutches left. So definitely getting to the end of the season. I know I've been saying that for the last week or so, but seriously, there is just a handful of clutches. This is actually a creamsicle. Ooh, Mama is upset. Mama, what? That, that, hey, hey, hey. Hey, get out of here. Mama, what is going on? Wow, she is definitely upset as could be. That is for sure. We're going to get Mama in here. We'll get her all cleaned up and ready to go. She's actually a creamsicle heifer scaleless bred to another creamsicle heifer scaleless. This is her second clutch and actually a really beautiful clutch. Two, four, six, seven eggs there. So uh, we've got this one good clutch. And then I looked at another clutch. We'll pull real quick. Didn't look like the fertility was very good, but we have to pull them anyway. So let's go ahead and just do that. And like I mentioned, this one definitely didn't look like it was going to have very many good eggs in it but again we're going to always pull it out this is actually a het silver queen scaleless bred to an absolutely stunning male for sure of course this guy right here which is a scaleless silver queen which is basically just a really light ghost corn snake but a scaleless one he's absolutely beautiful and he did father some clutches this year so but this again second clutches it happens and looks like uh, 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 uh mate ow oh, she got me darn girl <laughs> these girls are being protective today we'll get mama back in here get her all cleaned up get her water all that good stuff and i'll be honest with you from what i see right here it looks like maybe it looks like just one good egg in this clutch but the one egg does look good and you never know what's going to happen who knows maybe we'll hatch a scale of silver queen from that one egg other than that a bunch of duds uh well actually this one looks like it might be okay too i'll just set it up not sure if that one is i'll probably candle it to make sure but looks like one maybe two good eggs that's the way it goes as we're wrapping up the breeding season. I would say four, five more clutches and we are done for the year with Colubrids. You guys remember our little science project spotted python clutch that had the see-through eggs? Well, guess what? They are hatching and this is weird because we had one or two eggs that were a little bit see-through, but now you can literally see the animal right in the egg. It's almost like it's parchment paper. It is bizarre. I've never seen a clutch like this. So we have a little head sticking out here, but you can definitely see all of the babies, all the patterns, all the that type of stuff these ones have obviously already hatched out the other ones are coming that is just crazy i've never seen anything like it so there it is guys science experiment is over and uh, it hatched out with a bang for sure cool absolutely amazing love little spotted pythons and you know we always need more spotted pythons but this is wild look at you can see the snake moving around in the egg like that <laughs> i tell you i've never seen anything like it i am just blown away if you enjoyed this vlog can you do me a favor check out this playlist of a bunch of baby snakes you can roll through that as much as you want. Can you also do me a favor? Can you please support my podcast channel? It's called Checking In. You can subscribe to it right over here. On this side, you can subscribe to this vlog channel and please turn those post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.